Welcome to Inside Blockchain Podcast. My name is Tony Obiaju, but you can call me Tony Talks. What I intend to achieve with this podcast is to help you make sense of the blockchain industry and how this amazing technology is redefining work setting new paradigm shifts in businesses and helping to reshape societal interaction. I bring you Inside Blockchain Podcast, the most intellectual source of discuss with industry leaders and enthusiasts. Now here's just a brief disclaimer. All opinions shared by our guests on this podcast are exclusively their own opinions. They do not suggest investment recommendations of their companies. Neither should you take this information as an investment advice, as you are solely responsible for your own investments. On the show today, uh, I am joined by my co-host, Sushi. Uh, yes, Sushi, yes. how are you? I'm very well, thank you. It's a very, 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 very hot. Yeah, a hot Monday, day, right? Right yeah. here in Nigeria. It's a, so it's, it's a very hot Monday. <laughs> okay, so we have a guest all the way from Kenya joining us to talk about uh, blockchain as well as the advancement of um, the adoption of blockchain and Bitcoin in Kenya. And um, we're actually talking about the chairperson, the newly elected chairperson of the Blockchain Association of Kenya in the person of Rosaline Jisira. Hello, Rosaline. Thank you for joining us on the show. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm very well. Uh, so she say hi to Rosaline. Of course, I was about to say hi to her. <laughs> hi, Rosaline. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Good to talk to you. Yes, and congratulations on your election as the new chairperson of the Blockchain Association of Kenya. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, really appreciate. All right, You're fantastic, welcome. great. So uh, let, let's get straight into it. Um, uh, Rosalind, I need you to tell us uh, briefly, all right, about the state of the adoption of blockchain technology in Kenya. Okay. Um, we we are doing quite a lot in the space. Um, we have several projects going on um, across different sectors, from um, uh, the remittances area, especially. Uh, that one is picking up very much, and it's helping a lot of people do the cross border um, remittances. And uh, we also have now the developer community also coming up with um, um, different projects, okay, uh, protocols and all, yeah. Okay, uh, great. So um, you were elected in the month of June, am I correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. All yes, right, sure. great. So um, l let's talk about um, the, the process. All right, uh, that is involved with being elected as you know the chairperson of the Blockchain Association of Kenya. All right, then before we move into you know the plans, the progress, you know, and the others. So tell us, what's the process like? Um, we did have an annual general meeting um, that was called by the former chair, okay. and um, the members um, the members um, um, were also present. So the election was done through uh, the members did vote, okay. um, um, and I got in through an, an, an what do you call it a major majority of voters. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I got in. Okay, great. So um, looking at your uh, your expertise. Um, why you, Rosalind? Why did they pick you? <laughs> or, or is there, or are there like a sort of criteria that... Yeah, what that, are the criteria? Yeah, what are the criteria that the board looks at before picking a new chairperson? Right. Um, I guess I've been active in the field for about three years. Oh. Um, always, I've been very curious to know what uh, people are doing in the different sectors. So I go for the meetup. Um, I've met the different players in the different fields, from the developers to the people who are investing. Okay. And uh, I also got um, to start a women in blockchain group, um, trying to share information with the other women um, okay. in Kenya. I, I, I made an effort to attend a blockchain summit um, outside Nairobi um, 
Africa Blockchain Summit in Uganda. I did attend one in South Africa. Okay. And um, got to also follow up on um, what was happening around the world. And uh, I also did a, a course with the Oxford Blockchain, uh, Oxford University. Oh, wow. Um, just to get um, to get some certification. So I'm, I'm a very curious person. I really needed to know what was happening. And I guess my face kept on showing up okay. in different, uh, different spaces. And yes, that's how they got to know about me. It was actually quite an honor. Um, I was really touched that they thought I should um, take up the position. And I'm really working hard. I believe in... Um, pushing the agenda for our countries to advance in terms of adopting the future of technology. Um, Kenya has always been a, for, a front runner. Um, for example, we have MPESA, we are very good in terms of our ICT policy. And um, those are processes I've been involved in, and um, it's something that I still want to continue being involved in, in terms of advancing uh, blockchain adoption in the country, mm -hmm. um, just beyond Kenya, uh, within Africa oh. as a whole. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Now uh, let's let's talk about uh, the strategic plans that you have. You know, as uh, being elected the chairperson of the Blockchain Association of Kenya. So, what are we looking forward to? Right. Um, what it is at the moment, we we are we are quickly tidying up on the constitution that we had. We want to make it more uh, open, um, so that we can now um, ramp up and go on a massive. Um, a member recruitment drive, which we'll be having maybe from the month of September, if all goes well, okay. uh, so that we can get um, our members from all across the country. Um, we also want to target corporates um, uh, because we have a lot of silos, companies doing uh, different things within the blockchain field, but we want to be able to have people on board so that we can, they can all share information. Uh, uh, so we also um, avoid duplication of efforts. Huh? Now, we'll also be doing um, fundraising. We have several several things, fundraising. Um, but what we really want to do is also be able to have a blockchain summit for the country. And uh, okay. we want to have our summit um, um, in, in the different regions of, of Kenya, not just within Nairobi. You know, most times thing, uh, the summit always held within the capital city. So oh. we want to take it outside the capital city to the regions. And uh, have engagement with the community at the different areas. Huh? Okay, okay, Roslyn. Um, one very, one one very baffling thing, you know, one very beautiful thing is the fact that um, Kenya has put a lot of work into making sure that ICT ICT is available for use to you know every individual. Because we've covered an event in Kenya before, and I got to I got to have a chat with one of the key people there. Now. Uh, why exactly does Kenya embrace blockchain technology so well, so much? What are the problems that you've seen this technology solving in the numerous sectors that Kenya has? Um, I, I'd say um, MPESA, for example, prepared Kenyans to be able to trust um, the issue of digital, um, uh, digital virtual currencies as okay. a whole. So it makes it very easy for us to relate to what blockchain our technology is going to be offering the fact that you can be able to do things virtually and use technology to to solve problems that uh, we have. Okay. So blockchain technology has um, is Kenyans are really embracing it much in a much better way compared to the other countries. Um, but it's also because we believe in um, uh, looking out towards technology to help us uh, solve the problems. Huh? That's very beautiful, and I, um, I and I wish a lot of African countries mm -hmm. would do that also. Exactly, because yeah. tech is the future. Tech is the future. Great. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm currently going through uh, the the websites that uh, the content or article that was published on uh, uh, your election. That is um, your election and um, Kimani's election as well. So we have under the two-year strategic plan, uh, a new constitution. Okay. Can you tell us about this constitution and what it entails? And why it's been changed <laughs> to? <laughs> okay, okay. Um, the, the first constitution that we had was very basic. Huh? It, had, it was very basic and uh, we needed to broaden it up in terms of getting different uh, membership levels. For example, for the corporate, we had um, a blanket membership um, cover for the corporate, but we've had startups coming up and saying um, this amount may be too much. Can you come up with a 
different entry levels for companies. For example, if a company has less than 10 members, they do pay this amount. If a company has 50 members and above, they pay this amount. Are you able to graduate the membership levels um, or put it in a different tier level such that now the bigger companies are also able to subsidize and support their startup? You understand? Yeah, yeah. So that is one thing. That is one thing that we needed to do. Change that, such that we have. Um, um, we also able to take care of the smaller companies, startups, um, who also want to benefit from what's happening in the field, but they don't be able to pay um, what the other bigger companies um, are paying. Okay. So that was one thing that really needed to be looked at. Huh? Yeah, um, yeah. At the same time, we also need a, a constitution that would give us flexibility to engage in. Um, with, uh, for example, other associations within other countries or um, companies within um, the blockchain uh, uh, field for system that would enable us to have, for example, um, STVs, mm -hmm. um, just different um, uh, business models, depending on what it is that uh, the company wanted to do through the association. Okay. So the new constitution is going to give us more flexibility in terms of also giving the member um, members on board um, an avenue for them to be able to provide consultancy services that okay. are being um, sought after, as well as also profile them in such a way that they're also able to benefit financially. So we want to move beyond just uh, being an advocacy uh, to also be able to bring in uh, financial relations and uh, collaborations for our members with the uh, global partners. Oh. Right. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's a lot of that's a lot of um, that's a lot of changes. And I see that you're also um, overhauling the structure, the governance structure. That's beautiful. I also see that um, education and training across all levels from students all the way to po um, to policymakers is also going to be implemented. How exactly are we going to see this implementation? Yeah, that is that is a big, big, big uh, area for us, area of focus. Uh, we have university students who um, have been asking um, how to engage and we want to be able to come up with programs. Now, we have members of, um, association, uh, members who are from uh, members of the blocking association who are focused on just providing training. But uh, we, because they're operating differently and we have the university students, college students wanting to learn more, what you're doing is creating a platform that will bring in all these members who provide education. Educational okay. uh, programs um, in one platform where the university students or any other person who's interested in learning can be able to log in and subscribe to the training that they want, depending on the level at which they are at. So we'll have educational platforms for, for example, the developers uh, who want to upskill themselves, people who are totally newbies in terms of blockchain, what is blockchain, how can it help me? So we'll have different programs on our platform. Um, yeah. for the people that are corporate and all that. So anyone can come in and choose what it is that they want. Okay. Yeah? At the same time, we'll also have um, a calendar of events to enable people to also uh, be able to prioritize which events they want to attend, um, depending on their, their um, when they're free. We've been having a lot of meetups. One thing I like about our country is we have a lot of meetups. Every week we have meetups happening uh, yeah. within the yes. blockchain community. Yeah. Problem the problem has been that people don't get to know, or by the time they're knowing, they're already filled up. So okay. what we'll be doing, we'll have a calendar of, a calendar of events where um, that will enable people to log in and see um, next week this will be happening. I can be able to plan my schedule to attend this event at this spot, isn't it? So that's what we want, to make sure that people have full-time engagement anytime they have free time to learn more about blockchain. We are the ones on the, um, uh, providing that linkage for them. Oh, so creating maybe. strong linkages for them, academics is a critical uh, component that we are going to have in our strategic plan. And that's really amazing because education is the basis yeah, of it. Yeah, very, very, very important. Very important. Uh, Rosalind, great. So uh, be because of the fact that we'll be speaking to uh, Michael Kimani, who was uh, obviously the former chairperson, who is now the, the current secretary general, we, we just have... Uh, one or two questions uh, for you, so Sushi. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, so I, I want to ask: Can Kenya, uh, can the Blockchain Association of Kenya, be open to partner with other associations in Nigeria? Is it open for partnerships? And and uh, absolutely, 
<laughs> partnership absolutely. is very very important absolutely. right very, key. Yeah. <laughs> very important very important Eva, to in fact put me up <laughs> with officials we'll be happy to, to come up with a partnership okay. i've recently signed up an mou with the uh, blockchain association of ukraine okay. um, and we have other countries from far europe uh, that are also reaching out wanting to do some associations so in nigeria we really we're really wanting to do that with you let's, right. let's make it happen yeah, yes definitely definitely. definitely definitely all right so you've heard from rosaline gisera the chairperson the current chairperson of the blockchain association of kenya all right so they are open to partnerships and uh, we're going to be going on a break and when we come back we are going to be speaking with michael kimani who is the current secretary General, thank you so much, Rosaline, yes, for thank you so um, much. gracing the show and um, sharing your expert opinions and your comments with us. I'm most grateful. Thank you very much for yes, having me. Yes, do have an amazing day. Oh, yeah, do have an amazing day. day. Thank you. Hello, Ki- hello, Kimani. Thank you for coming on board the show. How are you doing? I'm great, Tony. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we just finished talking to Roslyn, and um, she has uh, told us so many things about, you know, our, yeah, your plans, all right, for um, the Blockchain Association of Kenya moving forward. So you are, or you've been elected as the Secretary General. Tell us about it. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, thanks for having us on. Uh, it's it's always great to to support uh, young people across uh, Africa. Across Africa, who are <laughs> yeah, definitely. Who, who are trying to get some excitement around blockchain? So, I, I was elected as Secretary General uh, during the last AGM. I think it was about four, three, four weeks ago. And yeah. uh, before that, I'd been I'd been the chairman for about. Uh, 18 months wow. uh, and we felt Rosaline it was a good time for her to take over because uh, the organization has grown to a point where we, we need a different kind of strategy to move beyond just a community community driven organization to to a, an organization that has a lot more teeth and, mm-hmm. and can have more impact at at, at higher levels of uh, of our country okay. so so I'm very excited to, to to, to be supporting Roslyn in, in this endeavor. All right, great. So now, uh, moving forward, how do you guys intend to take the association to the next level? Uh, I think I think for me what I've seen is uh, what I've learned from the, from the past uh, four years in the Nairobi technology space is, is, is strategy is really important. Uh, so you really need to, to look at, at things from a broad perspective, like two, three, four, five year terms and then plan around that. And one of the things we want to do now within those that strategic plan is uh, is partnerships. You want to do a lot of partnerships with with anyone who's willing to work with us, anyone who has an interest in this technology. And mm-hmm. and so far we, we we've gotten a lot of support from 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 the local ecosystem here, from from large organizations such as uh, such as Technobrain to to nimble startups such as uh, Casho Labs, uh-huh. we're also working together with with media partners like yourself and Bitcoin KE in Nairobi. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we are working with students as well at different universities who are reaching out. So we think there's something in this for everyone, and one of our key strategies is to partner with with, with as many people and as many organizations yeah, as, many as, organizations as, 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 possible. as possible. Yeah, yeah. I think the other thing we really want to do is is education as well. I think uh, we need to educate our young people, like developers and uh, and, and innovation people, to to come up with the ideas and the tools uh, that are built around blockchain technology. I think that's something that's very important, so that you can have some homegrown solutions, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that you can have. Uh, 
young people who have lived in our environment who can use this technology to yeah, solve these to problems. Technology. Yeah. Yes, of course. Now, um, yeah. you said something earlier about partnerships, strategic partnerships, and I'm looking at the two-year plan, and I'm seeing um, that you, you, the association is looking to garner stakeholders and engagement from across Kenya and East Africa. And East Africa. Yes, and you're talking about more people coming on board. Now, what are the criteria for you to choose to partner with either a company or an organization or, say, a person? Uh, so what we realized, uh, what we've realized before we even open the gateways to to membership to other people is we need to come up with a value proposition for the people who are going to join. I think we, we realize that the organization needs to be able to provide value for people who want to join. And then the, the association needs to think about how it can also benefit from from these people who are coming to join. So I think it's a it, it's a give and take. So in terms of giving, we we need to think about how we can upskill uh, uh, our members. Yeah. So we have members who are lawyers who are coming from the legal profession. We have members who are coming from the accounting profession. We have members who are students. So we have to think about how are we going to to upskill them and add give them skills that they can use in this new economy yeah and mm-hmm. in terms of selecting who who will we will want to work with i think there have to be people who are going to add value to what we're building what what we're really building here is a is a large network of people who are in the emerging technology space yeah. so so this could be in terms of uh technology support it could be in terms of uh knowledge sharing it could even be in terms of uh of capital like 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 right now we've been having our meetings at uh, at at Belfrix, which is one of the cryptocurrency exchanges yeah. in Kenya. They've been kind enough to to offer their wow. boardroom for their for, arms for, for some of our meetings. Wow, that's great. That's exactly, amazing. and us us we are planning on helping them by by coming up with something like a uh, like an anti money laundering and KYC policy that can become an industry standard for organizations in 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 the crypto asset business in. In, in Kenya or East Africa, so it's really about win-win situations. You yeah. know, we we give something to the to our members, and they give us something back. Then eventually, we can all win as as a nation or as a people. Yeah. Okay, great. Now, uh, still still on the the strategy plan, um, one of the things that you guys hope to achieve is a drafting of a virtual currency bill. Uh, am I right? Um. It, it's not yet decided. I think we we decided we are, we are definitely going to work on a policy do- document. Okay. But what we first need to do is to sit and prioritize uh, which is the most demanding sector, yeah, that needs a policy document. Because what you've seen in Nairobi, there are people who are who have different ideas on how they can use blockchain. There are some people who are talking about blockchain in the context of capital markets and how you can build blockchain. Uh, applications for crowdfunding for example for startups and local projects now there are some people who are talking about blockchain for for tokenizing real estate assets you know in the in the in the commercial context there are some people who are talking about blockchain and vehicle registries there are some there are some people who've been talking about uh who've been talking about stable coins and and having kenya shilling backed tokens running on a blockchain uh, there are people who are talking about cryptocurrency so I think ultimately within these two years, we definitely want to sit down and see uh, out of all these applications that are emerging, which which are the ones we should prioritize, and then we can put our we can lean in our efforts and our resources to to come up with a with a poli- policy framework for that particular yeah, use pro- case. Pro- so yeah. it's 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 not yet decided, but if it was up to me alone, I definitely want to do a, a virtual currency. Uh, <laughs> Delog act of that, of some sort, yeah. Of course, of course, of course. Um, we're very pressed for time right now, so I'm going to be asking a final question. Um, I'm seeing a flagship blockchain summit for Kenya. Um, could you tell us a bit about that? When when you're looking forward to it happening and what it's going to be about? Yeah. So so a blockchain summit is something we've we've been meaning to do for a long time. Um, what you've noticed over the past two years is a lot of foreign companies that come here and they're the ones who organize these sort of conferences and events. Sometimes it's around fintech, sometimes it's around AI, sometimes it's around data, you know, and I think it's about time we 
we as East Africans, we start taking control of our own conversation. So we definitely want to do a, a huge blockchain summit to bring in all the different stakeholders sometime in the next six to, to eight months. And actually everything that we are doing right now, some of it is channeled towards uh, getting as many stakeholders on board as possible for that particular yeah. outcome. So within six to eight months, we definitely want to have a, a huge conference that will not just be about blockchain, because blockchain is not going to work alone. There are other emerging technologies yeah, around technologies, blockchain. Like, definitely. Very true. Around artificial intelligence that are supportive of this. So we really want to bring all stakeholders to have our conversations on how we are going to push Africa forward using these emerging technologies. So... So I think six to eight months, you'll definitely see something coming out of uh, of Kenya and Nairobi. Of course, of yeah, course. Fantastic. Uh, we actually uh, wish you guys a massive success here from the studio at Crypto Radio 24. Yes, definitely. And <laughs> thank, thank you so much for coming on board with us today. Keep up the great work, guys. This is how we make change. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yes, and have a very yeah. splendid yeah. day. Yeah, enjoy yourself, Kimani. We'll talk to you some other time. Yes, yes. Alrighty, thank you so much for joining us on this particular build off Inside Blockchain. Yeah. Yes, I am Sushi and then I was with, I am still <laughs> with my co-host. Tony, 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 Do Tony. Don't forget Tony to Tony follow us across social media platforms at Crypto TV Plus. Yes. And visit CryptoTVPlus.com for news updates, links, sources, Interviews. and anything that have to do with the blockchain technology in Africa as well as around the world. Because we're always serving it to you yeah, red hot. like it's hot. Red hot. Like it's hot. It's hat. about time. We're signing out. So we'll come with you next time. It's a bye from Sushi and Yostruli. Yes, yes. Bye-bye.